KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Uh, We'd like to say good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Church Information and Open Forum. I'm Marianne Barnett, your host. We each and every Saturday morning from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on KNON 89.3 FM. On your dial. Oh, we got a lot of things to talk about. A lot of things going on. Just seems like there's just a rash of uh, police shootings. And uh, I don't know. What's going on? Is it me? Or is it or is it real that everywhere, every day you turn around, the police is shooting somebody? And uh, we want to talk about that and discuss that. Is this really, truly necessary and I do not believe I put ourselves uh, fully support Chief Brown in the firing of the police woman that that shot the young man that had his hands up unarmed. There was no need to shoot him. I don't care. She says she feared for her life. Well, she has no business on the police force. In fact, she should go to jail for shooting an unarmed person. And also, when we look at the situation, how, why is it so much racial bigotry within the police department. The lawyer that was shot and killed by the police there in uh, Lower Glan area, um, he shot at the police five times before they returned fire. They, 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 they held up to make sure that uh, they did not kill him and tried to make sure, but they ended up having to kill him, but he shot at them five times. Do you believe had this been a black man that shot at the police five times, you'd think they would have held up after the fifth shot, or, or, or after the fourth shot, after the first shot, and not kill the police and not be uh, killed? Uh, there is a double standard, and we cannot get past this without just calling it and telling it like it is. We have to tell it like it is. There are just so many other things that are going on in our community. But I got an interesting letter from a young lady named uh, Phyllis Guest. Uh, she stayed uh, uh, in the Greenway Parks area. And um, she wrote this letter. It, this intrigued me. I get a lot of letters from uh, uh, listeners, and, and and I read some sometime on the air because uh, when they're really intriguing, I read those letters. It says, I enjoy and appreciate your Saturday morning show. Last Saturday, I was most interested in points made by Mr. Robert Petrie on previous shows. I had heard him talk about the lack of city services, in particular sewer and water, near the South Dallas Uni- University campus. That's a University of North Texas out in the deep South Oak Cliff area. I had not, however, heard anything about a rail station with no public bath rooms and presumably just some septic tanks for employee bathrooms. How like the city of Dallas? Oh, should I say the white Dallas Citizens Council? As I have a uh, meeting next Saturday and so can I listen to your show, I just want to call your attention to a few other grave injustices uh, imposed by the city of by this city on African American citizens, all of which are founded by are funded by tax dollars, yours and those of you, your listeners included. The mayor's uh, election campaign was run by one of two white PR agencies. The other top uh, agency got the gravy from the mayor's first back to school outreach. 
and perhaps they jointly lapped up that remained uh, for the second. I imagine the fees were uh, stunningly high, and one of the same agencies made the video shown at the Grow South Dallas kickoff. Meanwhile, none of the four African American city council persons in is bothering to go uh, to the meetings uh, vetting the candidates for city manager. They are doing uh, and your community a uh, great disservice, Reverend Barnett, because you have a way to call them out on the radio. I will end what I think of the so-called conversation about race. Those conversations are taking place in the new city performance hall. At the heart of the richest, fastest growing white district, not a South Side or a South Lamar, and not of the uh, Corinth location of El Centro Community College. This is another scam. And I'll bet all the pennies in my piggy bank that the so called conversations are being organized for a fat fee by one of those uh, two uh, firms, uh, PR firms, which uh, with the city of Dallas, the result that the mayor hired. Uh, this is from Phyllis Guest. And uh, several things caught my eye in here, but uh, the vetting of the city manager, according to Phyllis Guest, none of our African American uh, council people have uh, shown up at any of these uh, particular meetings. If that's true, I wonder why. I wonder why. Because Dallas is not a strong mayoral city. The city manager actually runs the everyday operation of Dallas. In fact, the city manager is really the person that really, truly runs Dallas. And uh, if we have African-American uh, people on the uh, city council that's not going to these meetings to make sure that they find the best qualified person for all of the city, uh, yes, uh, I agree with you, uh, Ms. Guest, that um, they're doing us a disservice. And um, I wonder about this. I wonder what's going on so much in our city that if this is true, that our four black city council members are too busy to go to make sure we get a good city manager. I wonder, we, do we have that much going on with the city council? They don't have time for this. I, I wonder about this situation. I don't know. I can't say it's true, but this is what she says in this letter, and she seemed to be well informed on uh, issues concerning the city of Dallas. Uh, she's concerned about the amount of money the PR firms that helped elect the mayor is making. I guess they're getting uh, their money back. I don't know if that's what uh, what's going on here. But she's also talked about the services that we are not getting in the city of Dallas. She said, Mr. Petrie, on previous shows, she heard him talk about the lack of city services and in particular sewer and water near the South Dallas University campus, near the University of North Texas in uh, Oak Cliff. And this is a great concern, and it should be a concern. It should be a concern of everybody. This is a uh, part of the city of Dallas. Quite naturally, uh, there is some reluctancy because the landowners that uh, would benefit from this, they are, they are black. Two of them uh, appear on this show. One appear on this show uh, every Saturday. Uh, he does the job uh, report. But at the same time, uh, they're holding up. We know eventually they're going to put infrastructure in that area out there. But what's the holdup? What's the holdup? Why is it that the African Americans cannot get the opportunity to develop this land? I, I see what she's saying, and I hope... Those of you who listen to uh, 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 Robert Petrie uh, will understand that Mr. Petrie is very concerned. He's a landowner out there. Uh, he owns the Skyland Ranch. And, uh, yes, they're concerned. They pay uh, city taxes just like everybody else. 
They do the same that uh, those whom they say are coming in, whom one of <clears throat> our black councilmen, uh, who's supposed to, they are supposed to represent this district, Mr. Tenal Atkins, will not talk, even talk to them about putting infrastructure in that area. What do you think about this? What's going on in our city? Why is it we have people that look like us but don't represent us if this is true? What's going on? What's going on in our city? Uh, we have just too much opportunity to let go behind people playing 1970s, 60s, 50s, and 40s on back politics and not allowing we ourselves to develop our community. When we're talking about developing South Dallas, African Americans should be there at the forefront. This is where we have lived and have lived for years. Why aren't we given the opportunities to develop our own area? Or why are we allowing others to come in and rape our part of town? Well, but that's the old way of doing it because maybe some people feel like they maybe can get some personal gain from allowing it to go on like it has gone on down through the years. But I, I really hope and pray that you voters wake up. Voters wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up to what's going on in our city. You can have a much bigger share of the city. You pay taxes. You live in the city. You, you, you pay your property taxes. You pay sales taxes. You do everything. But people will come in here from other places and just take over where you live. Do you realize, in order to say really our community, when we say our community, the only thing we own are the, you know, and sometimes we don't own that, houses in our community. Uh, we don't own any stores. We don't own any banks. We don't own any uh, 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 service stations and all of this gas station. We don't own anything in our community. These same people that do business in our community wouldn't dare allow us to come in their community and exploit them. Why are we allowing ourselves to be financially raped and do nothing about it? Why 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 do we why do we act like this? What what is it about us? I know the effects of slavery was, was tremendous on us. But hey, it's time for us to wake up and get up and do things for ourselves. Stop acting like slaves. 972-647-1893 is the number to call. 972-647-1893 is the number to call. And I'm asking the question, why do we act like slaves? Oh, no, I got my job, I got my house, I'm doing well. But you still aren't doing what we all could be doing. You still could take some of the money. Open up. Small businesses. We're not business minded anymore. Once upon a time, our community was. We're not. Why aren't we business minded? Why aren't we uh, opening up? Now, I do realize that many of the businesses that are being opened up in America, small businesses, are probably the biggest percentage numbers are African Americans, but they are very, very small to our com, our you know, uh, our community, for our numbers. We can do a whole lot better. And, and I just believe we're going to do a whole lot better. We, we got to do better in 2014 than we did in other previous years. We've got to do better. We've got to wake up. We've got to, uh, show the world that we've got good sense. We've got to work, let the world know that the effects of slavery is wearing off that we're going to stand up and be just like other people on this earth. Everybody on this earth comes in with with the idea to open up businesses. And what they do is come in, they come into our community to exploit us. That's known worldwide. How you get a toehold in America? Go to the black people. 
they'll do business with you and won't do business with themselves. Why are we exploited? Look at that. Look at the hair care business. Let Koreans come in and just take over all this. Nails. I can go down the line naming the particular ethnic groups that comes in and do everything. And they do it all in our community. And we still sit back, just ride up and down the street and laugh and talk, standing in long lines, being mistreated, being abused, allowing these people to, uh, to exploit us. It's sad. All righty. All right. Well, uh, you said Rutherford. <laughs> Put Rutherford on the air. Let's see what he has to say. Good morning, Rutherford. Good morning. Miss, good morning, Mr. Barnett. Fine. How are you? Uh, I'm doing very well. And you, sir? Fine. Doing good, all good. right. I'm good. just glad to made it and in a blessing to see 2014. Yes. Well, uh, I always enjoy your show. Mm-hmm. And I have an observation and a question regarding... Uh, Police excessive force in the Dallas Fort Worth area, mm-hmm. um, wherein there's never hardly ever any use of stun guns or bean bags mm-hmm. or marksmen mm-hmm. to disable or disarm mm-hmm. a suspect mm-hmm. um, instead of going directly to um, what they call the service revolver. Well, yes, I mean they could use. The little stun guns, the electrical shock guns. Well, now, they have been declared as deadly weapons now. There have been those. There's a bad case there in Fort Worth where this people called the uh, police, and this woman came out and used a stun gun and killed the guy because they said she hit him with so much voltage. Now, a stun gun can be uh, very, very dangerous. Well, it's, 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 it's a lesser, it's a lesser. I know, it's not as tough as that revolver. Right. I agree with you on that. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they could get stun guns that have a less electricity. They don't have to right. have maximum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then bean bags. Mm-hmm. And, and marksmen. Right. And dogs. Right. Um, and tear gas. Right. They right. never use anything except going directly to deadly force in the Dallas Fort Worth area. But my concern is deadly force on unarmed people. Yes, well that that, that now that's a travesty and these people have the nerve, the audacity to be upset upset with the chief because he immediately fired this woman. Are the people out of their minds? But that's that probably that Dallas Police Association uh, they want to control the police department. They want to be able to run wild in the streets and do whatever they want to do to the people, and uh, there will be no reprisal. But I'm glad in this particular situation, Chief Brown stood up. Uh, the white man, that lawyer there in Oakland that was called them and then started shooting at them, he fired five shots before they returned fire. Can you imagine that? Mr. Barnett. Yes. Uh, before uh, one other observation, one other major concern that I, I t- have. I tell you what, uh, I, I, I'm up against a break right now. Put him on hold. We'll we bring him back and let him have his say, and then we move on. We'll be right back in just one moment. All right. We're back on Church Information and Open Forum. My Mary and Barnett, your host. And uh, you can call us at 972 647 one eight nine three nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Right now we have an open line. Basically, we got several things we want to talk about, and uh, you can call us at nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. All right, and let's go back to our phone line and say good morning to uh, let's see if it's Rutherford still there. Rutherford, are you still there? Yes, sir. All right, go right ahead, Rutherford. Yes, sir. Uh, my additional concern is with uh, the growing. Uh, gang activity all across this country. Um, the uh, the Justice Department and the local and state police should do something to have a major crackdown to exterminate gangs in this country. They could use the statutes that were used to dismantle or minimize gang activities or criminal activities by the mafia. Um, 
there are federal statutes against organized crime. Well, gangs, now, when you say uh, to exterminate gangs, uh, 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 could you be a little bit clearer on that? Uh, to, to, to dismantle them. You know, uh, the, you know the best way that I believe to uh, get rid of gangs is to have jobs in communities. It's awfully funny that we've never found gangs, but in areas that are heavily impoverished. You can go back to the 50s and 40s and uh, on back when gangs were heavily, uh, heavy, uh, strong, the east side gangs uh, in New York and everything. These were among Italian children and uh, young men. And, and everywhere the Irish used to have these gangs because there were a lack of jobs. Sir, sir, anytime. Yes, sir, uh-huh. I was raised in a time period when people had no jobs, had no cars, didn't even have a bicycle, didn't even have a horse. Mm-hmm. They didn't conduct themselves like these thugs. Oh, yes, uh, they did. They, what no, time, what time, no, time did you live in? There was a period of time when crime had What time gone. did you live in? Pardon me? What time did you live in? I was, I was born in the 30s. Well, I was born in the 40s. Well, and and we've always time. had we've always had uh, problems, even when we would come together at uh, these uh, uh, cafes and uh, nightclubs and different things. On Saturday night, we would cut each other up, we would kill each other, shoot each other. Back at, uh, on Saturday nights, you remember them Saturday night specials? I Any never time, remember a period of time. Well, I do. It's been like it is today. Never, uh, well, sir, you, you never, never had as much, uh, uh, as many guns, the proliferation of guns in our community. This is not by accident. This is on purpose that we have guns. Every Any teenager you find can get their hands on a gun in a matter of uh, minutes and go and shoot someone. See, this is not something that we just bring on ourselves. Uh, conditions have been made and formed, formulated to cause us to act like this. Now, I assure you, if we had jobs, more opportunities in poor areas, this would be the thing that would exterminate gangs. Because once people feel like they have something to live for, they will live like they got something to live for. Sir, I, yeah. I, I, friends, this is justifying criminal activity. No, I'm not justifying criminal activity, but criminal activity is many times is only the result of other activities that have happened before the criminal activity gets started. Hello? There is no justification for it. Well, that, 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 I'm not justifying or condoning it, but when you're hungry, when you have the have, when you one of the have nots in the richest country on the face of the earth and being put down all the times, everything you see about yourself is negative. This creates a situation where you will join gangs. We'll, the gangs will be your family, make you feel like you're somebody. I hate those gangs. I hate everything that's going on about it, but I, I'm not going to exterminate the victims of this particular crime. Let's go after those who are, who are putting these things together to make sure this activity happens and happens only in certain communities communities and, and, and making sure they don't come to their part of town. When I say exterminate, I mean the activity. Well, I want to exterminate it with jobs. How about but, that? Sir, uh, the drive-bys and shooting up industry, people who, who haven't done a thing to them, if, if, you know, in their own neighborhood. In what their did own they do to that? What did they do to that fellow that stays up north, North Dallas? Highland Park. What did they do to him? They're innocent. But if they don't create a uh, situation like this, a lot of them would catch hell because they're making money off of these gangs. These gangs aren't bringing uh, uh, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, everything else into this country. They're not bringing it in. These rich people are doing this and causing these things to happen, man. Don't destroy the victim. Let's go after the real criminal that's behind all of this mess. I, see, I didn't. I didn't say this. I said destroy, exterminate the activity, the actions, the crime. How have they exterminated down through the years? It's I, either by killing them, or I, else putting them in jail uh, for the rest of their lives, giving them criminal records. This is how it's done. 
This is how it's done. They're not going to go in and put jobs in those communities and try to lift, uplift people. No. This is why I call on black folks. Let's do something for ourselves. Now, this is what we need to do. All of these people who are doing this idiotic, imbecilic, moron crime are not poor. They're driving around with cars, with guns that cost a thousand dollars. They got it through criminal activities. And they want to keep it, and the only way they can keep it, they feel like it's through criminal activity. All of these gangs are not poor people. No, they got their money through criminal activities. Oh, no. Some of these people live in great homes. Oh, no, man. Please oh, yes, come on. Some do, but it's you have them in uh, every community. Bad ones, and it comes out of rich homes, yes. That's not, that's not, the, that's not the key. Uh, look at this boy that killed all those people, four people in the car. Uh, they're talking about he, he was uh, suffering for affluenza. Man, come on. Let's, let's get for real and let's go after the solutions to the problem, not just try to destroy those who have fallen victim to this situation. But I thank you for your call. I thank you for that, uh, your dialogue. Call me back again. All right, 972-647-1893 is the number to call. 972-647-1893. Let's go to line four and say good morning. Is that Tony? All right. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Rev. How you doing? Fine. How you doing this morning? All right. I want to get back to this economic development issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I've noticed that they have uh, TIF districts all around Dallas itself. You You're know, right. You're uh, right. Well, Pope and Keisha be TIF district. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was a, a TIF district in parts of Oak Cliff and South Dallas and West Dallas. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you know what uh, West Marlin and El Norris is? Definitely so. Mm -hmm. Well, in the past 10 years, they have developed that area. You better believe it. And you know, I was passing through that other day, Tony, and looking at that. Man, didn't used to be anything there but old service exactly. station. Exactly. It wasn't nothing but old service station there. And, and, so, and so I get disappointed when I hear our black officials who have not seen that over there and never asked that councilman over there, how did that develop over there? How did they, because I, I went to Kim High School, so I know what it looked like years mm -hmm. ago. Right. And for some reason, <laughs> it popped up. Mm -hmm. But I haven't heard the Wayne. Uh, anyone else mm -hmm. you say, hey, how can I get that in my district? Especially, like I say, the keys, po like the keys, um, uh, what, what is it, keys, the old shopping center, all about the VA. That uh, Lancaster tip, Keys? Yes, that should be a tip district just by its nature where it's mm -hmm. located. Mm -hmm. well, but, well, but see, Tony, um, I have well to do African Americans talk to me every day. Mm -hmm. So, Rev, keep pushing this. Because we ourselves can develop a whole lot of things. But these council people won't let us. They're holding back and driving uh, 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 the, the property value down. Let other people come in. These other people sort of hire them as consultants. And they make the money themselves public, you know, private as private citizens once they go off the council. This is what's happening in our community. We got people that are in politics uh, there just to get their hands on something themselves, and, and it seems to be hard. It seems to be hard to get uh, our people to understand. If you got a politician that's uh, just letting your district, uh, where you live, that's supposed to be re uh, representing you, just going down, down, down. Believe me, this is why you should have put him in office to make sure your district don't go down and your district thrive. But, but, but Reverend, you know, you know, if you say that right, I think a lot of people don't understand is, like you said earlier, I heard you say this doesn't make me want to call. Mm -hmm. These are our tax dollars, right? These are our tax dollars, man. And we're not here begging somebody uh, uh, else for, uh, to give us something. These are our tax dollars that should be invested in our community. We get no reciprocity on our tax dollars here in Dallas. And, and, and what I've noticed here is when a developer from the north side of town asks for your tax dollars, those are black dollars going there. That's right. We develop and North Dallas, South Dallas. Everywhere. Well, we don't develop South Dallas, but everywhere else that you see development, those are our tax dollars out there, too. And, and, and one thing we ask for is we ask for <laughs> equal, share, equal share of the pie when mm -hmm. it comes to the, uh, the contracts. Mm -hmm. I think I don't understand is this. The reason why we ask for those equal share is that because those are black tax dollars. Those, those are Hispanic tax dollars mm -hmm. going North. Yeah. Okay. When I, when I want white tech dollars to come in the southern sector, I gotta beg. I gotta you know smile and and, and cajole you. It's no, not I, coming unless there's some type of exploitation in the deal. You're gonna be heavily exploited for them to do anything out here. But so, but, but but with all 
these lawyers we have graduating, or black lawyers, we have all these politicians. Why haven't we had to become more sophisticated and say, okay, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we see you exploiting us. No, this deal ain't going down. And we, and, you know, so when you want some, when you want the Morris Madison Center, or you want uh, uh, that Cow Park Center, uh, mm-hmm. Park Bill, you ain't getting it done. No. Period. No. Until we get what we want. No. I'll leave you with that, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you for your call. Now, and, and let me ask you all. Your community is better off today than it was 20 years ago, or is it worse off? I wonder about that. 972-647-1893 is the number to call. 972-647-1893. Let's go to uh, line one and say good morning to Stephen. All righty. Good morning, Stephen. How you doing, pal? Fine. You doing all right? Oh, yeah. I'm glad to see the day. All right. Isn't it a wonderful day? That's most certainly is. Mm-hmm. But the problem that I think is, brother, is financial tr- uh, uh, castration in our communities. Uh-huh. And this is criminology 101. No jobs, more crime. More that, jobs, less crime. Yeah. It's a, as I simple know. as ABC. I yeah, guarantee I you, if we had jobs to give these uh, young men or young women, if they had plenty of good jobs and, and can get up and go to work and feel dignified, and, and, yeah. and, well, you wouldn't have them in gangs. That's right. It wouldn't and, exist. And what I don't understand is this. These politicians, so-called leaders of ours, these black politicians, they are afraid to get. They're afraid to confront these people about what needs to be done. No, nah, they ain't afraid. They, look, these people, are you, they, uh, they, 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 yes, they, they drive the value of the property down. Let the community go down. And when those uh, developers come in, they can get it for little or nothing. And and what you have happening now, along with that, is gentrification. That means whites are moving into these areas and getting it for little or nothing. It's right. all a game that was played on us a hundred years ago. It's played on us forty, fifty years ago, and it's being played today. Until it, 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 black people wake up and start electing people, that's going to yeah. stand up for them. It's going to keep being played. Uh, if we, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna get off there. If the black people in our community, we, if we just had the same mind, mm-hmm. we can change things. But we don't have the same mind. Yeah. No. That's our, one of our biggest problems. Yeah. We don't think the same. No. But You're I right. Enjoy, I enjoy listening to you every morning. I used to listen to you. I think you used to come on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I lost you. Yeah, I used but to come on on Tuesdays. Then one yeah. while I had a, uh, two days, Tuesdays and Fridays. Well, well my Tuesday wife was my main day. Uh huh. My wife happened to turn the radio on last week, and I heard you, and I'm going to keep listening. All right. Do. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a good day, brother. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Here's a line, 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893. go to line two and say good morning to Ezra. Hey, brother. Good morning, brother Ezra. I don't know. If this is Ezra Davis, uh, Ms. Elnora might be to have knocked him out by now. I don't know if that's All right. Let's go to line three and say, uh, is that Barbara? All righty. Let's say, good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Rembrandt. First, I'm always going to get on to the Lord. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yes, I'm going to tell you about me. I've been here 40 years. i got two subjects. I've mm-hmm. been here 40 years. When I first moved out here in Fresno Grove, uh-huh. for number four, okay? Right. Then we started getting the home, they started moving. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's it. Start moving in, but mm-hmm. I love Mexico. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. I tell you what, now drug dealers up in here. Now you see drugs there for these young. No, well, now that's by design. That's what I'm saying. They're alive to thrive in certain areas. That's right. But in other areas, if they got one call, just one call. Mm-hmm. About a drug dealer being in that area, you better believe me they would have every policeman in town there driving that rascal out. See, they're allowed to thrive in certain areas. Mm-hmm. So, so until the people get together, who's your city council person? Ah, oh, what a nice job. Bernice, Bernice, I go from Bernice Johnson. No, that's your congressperson. She's your congressperson. You've elected a new city councilman in Pleasant Grove. Uh, mm-hmm. I, if Reverend Wright listening, uh, Ron, call me and give me that con- uh, that ca- council person. Y'all go down in, in, in mass, tell him he needs to get on the police department 
And they need to drive every uh, uh, street peddler. They're not drug dealers. Drug dealers don't live in Pleasant Grove. The drug dealers no. live out north and stay oh, in yeah, mansions. No. Those are real drug dealers. But you that want all these the peddlers city. off the streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Y'all need to go to him and, and, and let him know that well, if you don't do it, you're going to get rid of him. Okay, but listen, I've been downtown. There ain't number crooks down there. They try to let me talk for 30 minutes, long mm-hmm. 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then I asked him, I said, I asked him, I said, are you all tired? Because I see how they be doing, looking all up on the wall, moving all around. Mm-hmm. And then because they went on. They want to come back. Mm-hmm. I asked him again, you know what I did? Mm-hmm. I picked up my, my stuff up, man. I'll be back. I'm always going back. Because well, you're not going to put me in a corner. You're going to put me in a corner. You're going to listen to me. Well, I tell you what, we need more people like you, Barbara, and that will stand up and make it. If if you don't want it better for yourself, make it better for your children, your grandchildren. I, make a better I, world for them. My own businesses. Oh, mm-hmm. I have one, but mm-hmm. well, I'm coming out of retirement, remember that? All right. I'm coming out of retirement. Come out I'm swinging. Kidding. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> and All I'm right. doing it too. Oh, yeah. Okay, then, Barbara. Bye, baby. You have a good one. All right, then. It clears the line, 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893. Let's go to line four and say good morning to Mike. All righty. Good morning, Mike. Oh, we, we, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Mike. Just hang in there. I got to take a short break, and we'll be right back. All right. We are back on Church Information and Open Forum. I'm Marianne Barnett, your host. Uh, you can call me at 972 972- Six four seven one eight nine three nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. All righty, let's go uh, back to line four and say good morning to uh, Mike. See if we can get Mike on this time. Mike, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, sir. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was. Um, I, I live over here at uh, over in East Dallas at Ross and Fitzhugh area. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've got some, you know, a few good things happening over here. We've got a a few really nice small businesses that are opening, and mm-hmm. um, there's some renovation. There's some, it's pretty neat. I, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I like it over here. Who's your council uh, person over there? I, I'm sorry? Who's your council person? I, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm ashamed to say I don't know, but mm-hmm. I've just, um, I, I'm just i going to find out. I've got okay. a pen and paper, and I'm going to call and find out today. <laughs> Please do, and call me next week and tell me. Okay, I sure will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, well, I will. I certainly will. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, one thing, though, over here, you know, we've got a lot of uh, em- big, empty lots for, for, for years now. Mm-hmm. There seems to have been kind of a land grab. It's in people, there's the development, there's just big empty lots that, that there's nothing going on there. People used to live there and, and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, that the customers of these businesses were, were all there. I, I, but, but these, but these big empty lots stay mm-hmm. vacant for years. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't I don't see why they can't do something in the interim uh, with them, like maybe make some make a temporary uh, playgrounds for children. You know, there's not much know, places and, for children to play over here. You know, Mike, that's a good idea because Dallas, to me, don't have enough parks where people can go and uh, sit down and just have yeah, a nice good, time. Open public. Places for people to yeah. gather. I, I, and, I, that's why I love the Northeast so much. I love cities like uh, Boston and New York. Oh, um, oh they have, New York is beautiful. Yeah, they have places people can go and sit down and you know it all and just relax in the midst of the rat race. You know, and and have themselves uh-huh. a nice time. I like. Well, it. well, I think it's going to take some more private initiatives. Um, the, the, there is a park I, 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 just on the corner here, mm-hmm. and there is a, a a street that artistic type people have taken over and remodeled, and it's mm-hmm. really really neat. Um, it's um, uh, on the prairie, and and it's really something. It's mm-hmm. all these like minded um, uh, business people and the mm-hmm. arts that have 
and 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 they've bought and and the land up here is expensive. My my my, my minister. You was can best me, believe it uh, over there off of Swiss Avenue. <laughs> Only the pure in heart. I'm a little further. I'm uh, I'm I'm on the I'm on the other kind of the other the other side mm -hmm. away from all of that. Mm -hmm. The um, this area um, there there's there's just not this is um, but 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 these people but but there's a private uh, these people have bought a lot and put like ground equipment in it and it's Good. a private. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was done privately, and and. But did they do it for minister, all the children? They, did they do it for all the children? It's children over there all the time, but Good. it's too mm -hmm. small for them. Yeah. Sometimes uh -huh. um, it's got a basketball, uh, and now there's a big park over here called Garrett Park, mm -hmm. and it's just on to to ruin just about. They don't hardly take care of it. There's a dead tree, mm -hmm. but but it but I, I guess I'm I, I remember. Is that remember owned by the city of Dallas? Place. Uh, I uh, yes, it's a city park. Well, uh, and, and and it's gone down. Well, and now that, I that that's that. a little project for you to get with your oh, council person and get yeah. y'all organized over there. Get uh -huh. get together. Have your council person to get some money for that park. And uh, you you see, uh -huh. this is how cities run down. Everything just letting uh -huh. people go, and uh, yeah. we allow all these people to serve in office and and. Uh -huh. and and don't do anything about it. Beautify. That just beautifies a community when you have nice parks and nice playful place for people to gather. And, uh -huh. and so, uh, with, with and and you know, there's not a baseball diamond or a, you know, it used to have all of that though. Mm -hmm. Some this it, it used to. I remember it as when I was younger. I, I remember a lot of this town when I was younger. This used to be a, a really nice neighborhood right. when I was right. a kid over oh, yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And um, but and and and. Um, but the um, uh, but it seems like they've just cleared out so much mm -hmm. that of this land that just stays idle well, for years. Go and, down there and let them know uh, that you're dissatisfied with what's going on, and your tax dollars are too important to be just wasted away on frivolous things out in certain parts of town. And uh, well, let them know yeah, it all I mean, can't they, it, it all can't go north. Well, I think, well, well, uh, but I'm oh, sorry, I got uh, my oh, lines have been full the whole oh, okay. show. Okay, well right? I'm gonna I'm gonna do what you said now, yeah. and I'll call you. I'll call you next. Week. Make sure you do that, okay? <laughs> okay. All, all right. right. Uh -huh. God bless you. Thank you. And thank you for the call uh, that says uh, District 5 out in Pleasant Grove is represented by Rick Callahan. Rick Callahan. Uh, the caller's name was, was that Barbara? Barbara, you look up uh, Councilman Callahan, Rick Callahan, and uh, you let him know that you're dissatisfied with certain things out there, and you're all organized. You get people, call other people. I know there are some a lot of active people. There are active people out there in Pleasant Grove. And uh, Pleasant Grove is one of the most beautiful areas of the city. I know it gets a bad rap, but uh, it is not nearly. It is not bad at all. You have some nice housing, everything out there in Pleasant Grove. And uh, if people are smart, uh, before you buy a home somewhere, go out there and check it out. You might want to buy it there because the houses aren't nearly as expensive as other parts of the city or Metroplex. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three is the number to call. Let's go to line three and say good morning to Ike. All right. Good morning, Ike. Good morning, Ram Barnett. Fine. How are you this morning? Doing great. I appreciate the show. I'm enjoying what I'm hearing. Uh, Thank you. I was Thank you. Listen to the letter you read about mm -hmm. uh, the city council, the black people on the city council not going down to represent. Mm -hmm. And just pick about the city manager, and well, now if that's to... true, that's that's despicable, man. Uh, here's the person that actually runs the city, and you don't right. you don't care enough about that particular position to uh, make sure that uh, we get someone that's going to be fair and represent our community also. Well, one of the one of the candidates that's running, I mean, that wants the job of city manager or the assistant city manager, and he helped. Uh, Put in place of stuff down there at that municipal court. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to go down there and fight like the Dickens just just to uh, fight a ticket. When you used to go down there and send a lawyer mm -hmm. to fight a ticket, now you got to go down there and be interviewed by a prosecutor and look at films and tapes and spend the better part of the day just to. Uh, 
contest a, a traffic ticket. So that was one how old city had, manager did that? No, not how old city manager. The one that wanted to be city manager, A.C. Gonzalez. He did and this? Judge, and Judge uh, Daniel Solis did that. Well, we don't need them down there then. Well, we had a black uh, chief judge down there, and that was Judge Victor Lander, but they mm-hmm. asked him out of there. And because he took the wrong stands on certain things that the city didn't like. We, well, we can come on out and, and we can yeah. tell you he wrote some things in the newspaper that the city didn't like. And if they don't like you, they, they excuse you from that position. Right. And uh, we're talking about uh, over there and, uh, you know, over there with Robert Petrie and that, and that property and them property owners over there. Mm-hmm. Well, we got to understand this also. What politics came in it? We voted for this $650 million bond package. Mm-hmm. When they only told us that only five million was coming to the southern sector, that's and right. Put, and and, and the put, southern sector supported that thing. That's right. They put they, they put their dot line in over there by the cop. Mm-hmm. But they're and not most, putting in, even putting in restrooms. That's to keep from putting that type of sewage in our water system out there. Uh, cause if they put it there, that means Petrie and all the others that are out there can connect up and that would raise the value of their property. I agree. Mm-hmm. But we also but got they won't do it. The, the same people who we're talking about. We're talking about Tanel yeah. Atkins. Uh huh. Yeah, well, we didn't get a, a grocery store out there in Holland Hill. So how you gonna get a real, I mean, a restroom on a dark rail? You can't get a grocery store in the middle of the neighborhood. Well, they got a hundred still in Exxon or something right there. Mm-hmm. Exxon that sells tomatoes or Exxon that sells whatever it is. Well, they, co- they, they, com- they, they, they create these food deserts. They right. create them. They want them there. They want you to drive and exploit, be exploited in your community where you drive other areas and pay these high prices for food and you won't get proper nutrition in your own area. People, we need to wake up to see what's going on. Hello. Uh, I, 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 you're cutting out. I can't hardly hear you. All right. Uh, uh, I try to call us back. Try to get back in. Try to get back in. Uh, let's go to another call. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. Just try to get back in, Ike. All right. 972-647-1893. 972-647-1893. One eight nine three is the number to call. Let's go to line two and say good morning to Laverne. Hello, Laverne. Good morning, uh-huh. good go right morning here. Rep- Good morning, Reverend Barnett. How are you this morning? Fine. You doing all right this morning? Oh, I'm doing beautiful this morning. It's the day the Lord has made. Yes, it is. Well, I tend to disagree with you on an issue that you had stated earlier about these young people and the jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, a bunch of these young people don't want to work. They want to stay at home on their parents and their grandparents for mm-hmm. them for, uh, for support. Now, uh, for before the, you go any further, hold, hold on, man. No, no, I, I, I want to stop you right there. They can't stay where the parents and grandparents won't let them stay. Well, a lot of the parents and grandparents are letting these young people stay at home with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've worked for the Postal Service, Reverend Barnett. Mm-hmm. I've been working for the Postal Service 25 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, about 10 months ago, they had a major hiring done within the Postal Service. Mm-hmm. They had a bunch of young people to perform uh, services uh, there. Uh, they want to take off when they want to take off. They are not the rules and regulations. They tell the supervisor what they are going to do and they aren't going to do. They, they feel like they want to come to work. And when uh, sometimes their action is getting ready to be put on them, they quit. About three months ago, 25 young people walked out of the post service because they didn't want to submit to authority. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, now let me ask you something. Uh, are these children, these young folk, are they still staying at home? They are at home. When they well, now, we're we going get, back to, when they, when let me say this, let me say this. I'm not, I'm not through. When they get three and four paychecks, the first thing they do, buy a car. I tell you what, uh, 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 put, uh, put on hold. Let's take it, huh? I got four minutes? Oh, okay. Go right ahead, Laverne. Okay. When they get three or paychecks, Reverend Barnett, they buy a car, they buy clothes. Instead of 
uh, uh, putting their money to uh, some type of housing arrangement for themselves. They have children two and three years of age. They want the parents and the grandparents to take care of the children while they are uh, escapading. When they get two or three pages, they run to these clubs, buy clothes, and instead of finding them a place to stay. Okay. Now, Laverne, I'm not going to totally disagree with you. You're right on that. But my problem is, why are these parents uh-huh. and grandparents so weak? See, if you tell them they're going to work, they got to get out and get it for themselves, and uh, guess what they're going to do? They're going to do that. If you tell them uh, when you finish high school, uh, college is nothing but grade 13, you're going and you're going to do well, and you better do If you don't, you're out. You're out on your own. I'm not going to take care of you anymore. Why don't we have parents and grandparents like because that anymore? These parents and grandparents are not... Uh, they are children themselves. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, kids uh, are telling the parents what to do these days. Well, now whose they, fault is that? Yes, they are. The, the, the kids are telling the parents. Well, what whose fault is that? It, it is the parents. The parents' fault. Well, then I'm saying. Until we get back into the business of rearing uh-huh. our children, just not right. letting them grow like weeds, but uh, rear them like you have. Uh, what's that good grass? That Bermuda grass, and all, and take it and take care of them, and make sure uh, they are disciplined right and treated right. You won't have this problem. But as Don't long as we are trying to be friends with our children and right. go along right. to get along and let them have their way, what do you expect? And you are right, Reverend Boyd. You are right. We are friends not with our children, and it shouldn't be. I, my, all my children are grown and everything. They've gone to college and everything. But guess what? I'm still daddy. I, I, I don't. You know, they respect me. Right. Whatever I say right. goes until this yeah. day, and it'll always be like that because I raised them with, to be, uh, I was a strong disciplinarian. Very yeah. strong. Yeah. And it well, pays have- off in the long run. Yeah, but we have to get back to the old tradition. Well, yeah, uh, you know, I, I I hate to say that I agree with you on a lot of that stuff. We we do have some sorry young people, but yes, we do. We do have some good young people. Yes, we do. Yes, and we, we want we, we want to lift them up. But let me tell you something: if they grow up with an example mm-hmm. of seeing daddy getting up, going to work every day, and taking yes. care of them. That's what they want to be like. Yes. My boys have told me that they want they want to be like me because they saw me getting up and going to work every day, uh-huh. taking care of them, and so they didn't grow up without a, 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 a role model around them that didn't go to work. But they grow up in a house. They don't. Some of them don't even know who their daddy is. Right. Uh, right. And, and and having to uh, uh, have mama struggling there, and sometimes she don't want to get them to go to work. Well, if you grow up in an atmosphere like that, what do you expect? You're right. But well, I'm gonna get off there and listen to some more. Updates. All right, thank you, ma'am. We uh, we're uh, about to go into hour number two. Stay tuned with us. We're going into hour number two. Those who are on the line, you can stay right there. And we got one line open, just clear nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back on Church Information and Open Forum. I'm Marianne Barnett, your host. We have an open line uh, this morning. We talk about anything you want to talk about. 972-647-1893 is the number to call. 972-647-1893. Let's go to line one and say good morning. To, I think this is a fellow I know. Uh, let's say good morning to Tom. All righty, Tom, you there? Hey, good morning, Reverend. And Man, I, how you doing? You getting ready to run for mayor? <laughs> no, no, it's a couple of years off. Remember now, I'll, I'll <laughs> kick your campaign off this morning, Tom. That's <laughs> <laughs> cute. Uh-huh. The people out in Pleasant Grove will be big supporters of mine. They put up with a hand painted uh, sign. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take Pleasant Grove for you. <laughs> Make sure you at least win Pleasant Grove. Really, really. Yeah, I have uh-huh. to second your motion about being happy to see 2014 because I was born in the 40s too, 1942, and I'm mm-hmm. truly glad to see. I hope to live another 72 years. But well, ain't nothing that, wrong with that. That's a blessing, <laughs> man. Except mm-hmm. I don't want to pay any more child support. Just having the fun going through the motions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Tom. Uh, Thanks for that little blue pill. What was mm-hmm. I going to say? Uh, 
You know, uh, I'll count the person out here is Mr. Madonna, who used to be on the school board. He took his sister's place, Pauline, because she had served three terms, and she well, wasn't now, I got uh, Callahan as the council person out there. You know, they uh, well, we push hard district. right here on, on Kano and to get a district grown in Pleasant Grove. And, and, uh, no, 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 I'm talking about the gentleman that called from East Dallas. Oh, Dallas. East Dallas, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the one that. I wanted, too. Uh, yes, you said... He said he was going to uh, find out and call you back next week, but it's uh, Mr. McDonald that was on the school board, my Alzheimer's. Uh, he won't let me think of his first name, but he's Pauline's uh, brother. Pauline's brother? Right, right, right. She, well, now, yeah, they I'm come from, you know, they come from a real good family. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, I knew their dad, Pancho McDonald. Yeah, Pancho uh, was, a, was a great person. He's a great oh, yeah. person. That, uh, the yeah, Hispanic community ought to push for something very major in this city named after Pancho. Oh, it, no, it, no. They need to push hard because uh, he's one of the great, great men of this city, Pancho Medrano. And yeah. he did a lot for the youngsters in the boxing, you know, the Golden Oh, Golden yes, Golden oh, Golden yes. Golden yes. Golden they, 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 mm -hmm. they had the gym over there off of uh, Harry Hines over there where Joe yeah, Gomez used to run uh, run that gym over there years ago. Right, right. That. Mm -hmm. Growl all the park. What was I going to say? Um, we've got that problem for a long time, though, with leaders that uh, we elect to city council. They don't do anything that uh, inland port, which would have created 65,000 high-tech, well, well-paying jobs, mm -hmm. high-tech jobs. And yet, uh, you know, they, they've been dragging their feet for the pro, pro family, so it wouldn't compete with Alliance over there in Fort Well, Wood. you had politicians here. Uh, in Dallas, you had, you had politicians, black politicians have blocked the thing. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Get, get Down there in your county off. commissioner's court, all of them, they helped block that thing. They blocked that, it. Exactly. And and, and uh, that Omni Hotel, which they, you know, pushed through, it, it has people like uh, Maids and uh, Bell Hops, and, and, and you're not going to make that much money as a Bell Hop or a room clerk. You know, mm -hmm. as you would over there in that high tech. Oh no, no, no! That 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 that, that, that didn't import was going to be the largest one uh, in America, if not the yep. world. It would be equivalent to uh, uh, the Port of Los Angeles, uh, Port of Houston, Port of New York, uh, New Jersey. Uh, but it'd be inland because Dallas is the only city in America that has four interstates running through it. Exactly. Did you realize that? Oh, yeah, and they were all the way to Canada. Yeah, and, uh, uh, four, it's the only city in America with four yeah. interstates. Uh, you've yeah. got 20, 30, uh, 35, and 45. Exactly. Four interstates. No other city in America has that. And okay. this is, hey, man, you're talking about uh, creating good-paying, high-paying jobs. Oh, my God. And, uh, you know, the greed... Are uh, people in our community that undermine things like that, and our people still support these people? Oh yeah, well you know uh, they got all these billions, and then when they die, you know they're the greatest thing since uh, the second coming. And uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but how did they make their money? You know, how did they make their money? Uh, to By ripping the poor off. Exactly, exploiting them. It, it goes way back to the Rockefellers and the Carnegies, and mm -hmm. you name it, and, and the industrialists and that mm -hmm. you know. Were, originally built the uh, industrial uh, development in this country when mm -hmm. we first started. But, um, yeah, but we ended that. up with that boss tweed ring. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Tammy Hall. And Tammy Hall. Yes. <laughs> and New York, oh, gosh. <laughs> every, every, every city has, we had the, you know, Dallas Citizens Council, like you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. at, um, you know, they, they, they ran the show, and uh, a lot of them were Klu Klansmen uh, mm -hmm. who were just not having their sheets in the same way with the sheriff's department and police no department. they pulled their sheets off a lot of them got put on black robes and yeah, everything yeah. else and three piece suits and start packing uh briefcases rather than crosses and uh but the same mentality is still there bottom line bottom line and what we're talking about is it shows exactly what like we, the, the, those restrooms in the uh dark um uh, uh, transfer centers. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for uh, Ann McKinney browbeating the uh, diet board back in the 80s when it was first sure mm -hmm. we, we, we wouldn't even have them in any of the stations. There's very few stations that have uh, that. You know, uh, what was the guy's uh, name that used to chain his wheelchair up on that dart, uh, on the dart bus? You remember the guy? 
He was no, in a wheelchair. He, he, they, we, they hired me. I was the building manager of the building that they were in uh, down on uh, mm. the West End, uh, right. Market Street. And uh, they, we had people coming in from all over the country. The, uh, the board got scared, and they hired me to be security for the <laughs> They gave you a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was only security for the building. You know, I was building manager. But uh, when they had the board meetings they, on Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. uh, when, when those people in wheelchairs started coming, and like you said, uh, tying themselves to the buses. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because they wanted to, uh, we, and they should be, you know, it's federal law to have those wheelchair lifts on the buses, you know, so they were only uh, lobbying for what uh, the federal law requires. But, yeah. you know, see, see if you can get around it, you know, they're going to do it. But, uh, well, they thought they had a way of getting around it, but I'm trying to think of this guy's name. It'll come to me. He used to chain himself to the bus. You're talking about a local person from Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't think because we had so many of them down there. Yeah. I had my hands full. I didn't even know yeah, their name. Yeah, well, we, we, we need to bring up board. the history of Dodd because remember, Dodd swore up and down. They would never go south of downtown Dallas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we fought and let them know the hell they said. They're going to serve our community because at the time, the southern sector was over at 80 percent of all uh, uh, what the DTS at that time. Exactly. Uh, the, uh, Dallas Transit System, we were 80% of the ridership. But thank you, Tom. You got to okay, run. Okay, you're welcome, Reverend. Bye-bye. Okay, all right. 972-647-1893. Let's go to run on line two. Who do we have on four? I don't have a, a name on four. Have, Hello? Go right ahead, Ron. Good morning. Yes, sir, Reverend Barnett. Uh -huh. uh, in America, uh, 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 all races, there is no justification for crime. It, the Bible says, there shall not kill, there shall not steal. And our Father God does not make suggestions. Uh, it does not say uh, you can go and, 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 and shoot 10, 15, 20 people in homes um, because you don't have a job uh, because of this or because of that. There is no justification for criminal activity, period. Well, now, what is criminal activity? Uh, was when we uh, used to go and set in uh, and at soda fountains that said for white only, uh, and uh, they would take us and throw us in jail. Was that criminal activity? I'm talking about gang crime. And well, crime. now you didn't say you, mean, you didn't say you didn't say, okay. I, what about that gang that they put together to go into Korea? Uh, to fight on the uh, uh, European front, to fight in the Pacific, they call the U.S. Uh, armed forces. What about that gang that went over there and dropped bombs, uh, an atomic bomb on Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki? What about those gangs? Am I to understand that you are in support of the criminal activities? No, I'm not in the support of the criminal the activities, today? but many times... People are fighting for survival, and we become so upright and judgmental and, and and try to quote the Bible when we don't quote all of it because the Bible said God is a man of war. You do know the Bible says that also, that there comes a time when people get enough and get fed up, and they start looking for family members and looking for people around them to help them support them to survive. Well, until we come to our senses and try to help people get jobs and get moving forward and get ready, you always have some lazy, sorry folk. We know that. But until we stop condemning those who have been condemned by others to exploit their community and create these gangs, until we look deep into the situation, we'll never get anywhere. Are you there? Is he there? Oh, he's gone. All right, okay. All right. 972-647-1893. 972-647-1893. Let's go to line four and say good morning to James. Good morning, James. Yes, good morning, Reverend Wonder. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, James. Yes, sir. Amen to what you just said, because these so-called Christians out here, we sort of love one another. Mm -hmm. Now we've been taught to hate ourselves as mm -hmm. African-American black. Yeah. We out here killing each other and going on. Mm -hmm. And then there's so deadly force that these police officers <laughs> and all them use it. That, that, that crap there, yeah, Reverend Barnett. That's the symptoms of slavery, our lack of yes, doing sir. business with one another and sticking together, and then getting on radio and calling other different places and condemning each other. We don't realize we're the victims of an exploited system that have exploited yes, us uh, for centuries. Right. 
and uh, we are on the oppressor side. Yep. We don't realize we're being uh, oppression is still there. So it's a peculiar institution called slavery inferiority complex, mm -hmm. but we hate ourselves. Yeah. Let me say, you, when you open the program up, you mentioned about relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was talking about, hatred. We hate ourselves. We first love yourself. Mm -hmm. We respect each other. Mm -hmm. And something that just happened during the New Year's Eve is called Watch Night. So many folks probably went to the church, sit up there and sound a few songs, and clap hands and thought they was in heaven. Mm -hmm. But what they missed was, what was the purpose of Watch Night when it took place? Well, well the purpose was the slaves is watching out, slavery go out, and freedom, so-called freedom, come in. This is, that was our opportunity to unite ourselves and get out of what a lot of the callers have been talking about. Why mm -hmm. didn't we unite all the preachers, the churches, the church folk call themselves Christians, Christians, the hypocrite folks, and come together like Reverend Barnett and all the others, Brother Ron and Peter and all of them are telling us, let's come together, get involved, go to the city council meeting, go to school board meeting. Get yourself involved. Quit pointing and making excuses out there. Even the folks that walk in the streets, when I come to Dallas from Palestine, I'll go to Houston or whatever. I see some of us pushing buggers and britches back and all that, but that don't necessarily have to stop you from getting involved. You just mm -hmm. you bag your britches on and get involved or do something, but don't make no excuses. And mm -hmm. Reverend Brother on his master plan, when Brother Peter is talking about in Dallas, Mm -hmm. These master plans go way back 20 and 30 years that these people read rich white folks and whoever else along with them. Mm -hmm. They done planned that many years ago. It's happening down here in Palestine. Right. They're getting ready to buy this YMCA swimming mm -hmm. pool that was named after a veteran mm -hmm. white soldier. Mm -hmm. But now they got enough money. The blacks are not going to be able to go over there. They got to go to a swimming hole or somewhere. But it's a lot of that stuff going on in Palestine and throughout the Oh, man, the, the same wherever. thing coming down everywhere. Yes, it is, and we need to get involved, Reverend Brother. I was looking at the newspaper over there in DeSoto, Texas, where you had three young black guys on the school board over there. We need to get ourselves involved like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we hope those stuff. that are in these uh, bedrooms communities that will, like DeSoto, Cedar Hill, uh, uh, Lancaster, and all of these, get themselves together. Take over your community. Bring businesses into your community. Develop those communities even further. Don't just own just a home and a, and a church, but own the businesses out there. Run your yep, community. Sir. And then maybe they can be shining examples to the people all across this nation. All right. Yes, Thank you, James. Thank you so much. All right. 972 972-647-1893. 972-647-1893 is the number to call. Uh, where are we going? Line one. Uh, Jamie. Uh, is that Jamie? Hi. Jaime. All right. Okay. Jaime. All right. Thank you. All right. Good morning, Jaime. Jaime, are you there? I guess Jaime is gone. Let's go uh, line two and say good morning to uh, Imani. <laughs> yes, how are you, Imani? Man, I thank God for getting over here, and I definitely thank God for you. You speak it up, and you speak it out, my brother. I'm proud of you. Well, this is you, nothing but this is the only way I know how to do it. Well, you uh, know what? If you ain't telling the truth, you ain't going to make it in no way. No. It, no, we got too many liars now, lying yeah. preachers, lying politicians. Mm -hmm. I work with them all, and they, 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 you about the only one I saw. Mm -hmm. Not not talk. I saw stand up in Dallas, mm -hmm. especially. But well, was, you see, what's happening is, I, 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 I'm not going to hold up for preachers, but our preacher brethren need to go study, go back and study some more. Well, they, 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 they have gotten an interpretation from Scripture that was basically given to them by racist, uh, conservative white Europeans, and they really believe they are preaching exactly what thus saith the Lord. But if they go back and start reading and get the etymology of those words and different things, what they, they really mean, and go back and really study the history of such a situation, most of our preachers, 99% of them, would change really what they're preaching uh, and, and what they call the gospel. They would change. Right. They haven't right. studied. And the sad part about it, they're not going to. Uh, I might as well be on the right. Oh, no, I got it down right. No, you haven't. You've been making some mistakes. And I can shake any preacher and show it to them. I can, well, show them, I, can, I can show it to them in a minute or less where we have been making mistakes over the years. Well, you know, uh, I don't know this. I can't tell you what the scripture is. There are many coming in my name. They're going to be considered as sheep and wolves. 
clothing. Mm-hmm. And instead, it's going to be many. Many the word, many right. bird, many right. lots of them. Right. Guess what? It's here. The politicians are even worse than the neo. Oh, my God. Now, they, 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 these they fellas, are, most of them know better. They know got, better, but they are exploiting our community. Well, you, that's why the only reason I called back this morning to let you know that <laughs> I thank you. Right now, I'm going to give you, tell the truth. You know, I, I, I really try to live the truth. You are the only man that I've seen stand up that, uh, that, that has the word in his title that, uh, that, that you wear your title that you deserve. Yeah. The rest of them Negroes and they, the people need to throw these printed books, they take his uniform off and they, yeah. Mm-hmm. people oh yeah money um, I, I'm up against a break uh sorry about that I'm up well, against I, a break I and I, but, uh, uh-huh. it's, we got a plan we got a plan but we they gonna be out of there pretty soon we okay on something. all right okay. thank you and you can call me at nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three and we'll be right back all right, we're back on Church Information and Open Forum. I'm Marion Barnett, your host. And you can reach us at 972-647-1893. If you have questions or comments, 972-647-1893. And uh, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you want to talk about. You want to talk about human relationships. I had mentioned that in earlier, uh, but we've been talking about other things. And uh getting together, finding that significant other, that significant mate in 2014. For many, that's a priority. They may never admit it, may never see it. Uh, when, women pretend that they don't want it. Men pretend they want it, but they admit it don't. Let's stop pretending. Let's stop playing. Let's start being for real. Maybe this might be your year. Give me a call. Let me know. 972-647-1893. Let's go to Ike on uh, line three. Ike, Ike, you there? Yeah, I'm back. Uh, Glad you got baby. back in. We, could, we couldn't hear you. We had a bad connection. We had a bad connection. Well, I, yeah, I just wanted to close out with this point here. You know, we complain about what goes on in the city, but we need to learn how to vote. First of all, we got to get people to vote and learn how to vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, we complain about city council people that's not treating us right mm-hmm. in the mayor. But uh, Mike Rollins wouldn't have been mayor had it not been for your black radio station, your right. black counselors, mm-hmm. and your black churches. Yeah, because, support of the uh, black community made him mayor. That's right, because mm-hmm. Congo was winning that race and... You know, we went with what the black leaders they do, and that's what we wind up with. Mm-hmm. We follow that in the important thing, uh, Congresswoman Ed Bernice Johnson told us. Mm-hmm. There was a shakedown going on, and we went the other direction. Mm-hmm. That's what we wind up with, and I'm going to close it out and let somebody else talk, but we got to learn how to vote and start looking at who we voting for and look at their record. God bless you. Well, well, before you go, Ike, uh, we say we won't... Uh, improve me. We say we want a better community. Until we learn, as you say, uh, who to vote for. Learn to uh, look at people. Look at people's track records. Uh, you catch somebody that comes uh, before you that you never heard of before. All of a sudden, this person have money behind them and and got uh, other folks supporting them. That ought to send off a a, a, a a bell in your mind. There's something ought to start ringing in your mind. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this person? Where has he been all these years that we've had all these problems and you haven't heard from him? But all of a sudden, they want your vote. Uh, right. Something, right. Shouldn't, that, shouldn't that tell you something? Well, what, what happens is, just like these judges we spend a vote for, mm-hmm. okay, we know very little about these people. Mm-hmm. Just because somebody else said they're a good judge, that they got a good record. Look at the judge over in Fort Worth. They gave the, uh, the 16-year-old 10 years probation. Mm-hmm. Look at the judge over there in Dallas who gave a young black boy five years in the penitentiary behind a dog that they say he killed. But mm-hmm. in actuality, they euthanized the dog. Yeah. So we got to look at this and look at the facts. Yeah. You know, so we got all this going on, and nobody is paying attention to it. We just read the headlines and and run with it. Mm-hmm. We got too much going on. We got a lot of development going on in uh, 
in the southern sector that's not helping us. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard a guy talking about uh, Westmoreland in Illinois. Well, go over there and look at Copper Hill in, in 80 or 20. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a whole new city right there. That's Copper Hill. Oh man, that's and, and really, north of that. that's really nice okay. over there. But uh, we uh, uh, are we getting many jobs over there? No, we're not getting any jobs. But you look right north of there where the jobs are. They call that a uh, political park. Mm -hmm. But political park, how you gonna have a division, a city between Oak Cliff that's reaping the benefits of your taxpayer money, your city taxpayer money? You know, they come by building a gateway to political park. And took some of their six hundred and fifty million dollar bond money and shot it back down through the Trinity River project. Out of six hundred and fifty million dollars, the southern sector wind up with five million dollars. We should have voted it down. Well, but uh, hey, when people just go and used to doing what uh, uh, white folks have told them to do, and still continue these practices, are uh, uh, we getting what we vote for? We get what we vote for. Yeah, we complain about just, people we yeah, put in off. Yeah, yeah, and we have people that are uh, supposed to represent us, tells us to do these stupid things and uh, do things like that, well, Reverend working Reverend against tell us ourselves. All the time. Mm -hmm. Reverend Mike tells us all the time, I'm a black police chief and I'm a black district attorney, we got more African American or blacks going to the pen and been getting, getting killed in the street by police than under any other administration. So what does that tell us? Well... And as soon as he decided he would fire a uh, police person, a police woman, for killing an unarmed, or shooting an unarmed black man, well, that police association has raised his ugly head now, and they, they're after you. They're after well, him. You got to understand this. Mm -hmm. You got to understand this about that. When, when I was especially shot an unarmed man, she Brown wanted to arrest him, and the judge denied that. Mm -hmm. When this lady shot an unarmed man, she, he got she got fired, but there was no arrest one for assault on a on a person, or no kind of arrest one was there. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't so, she go to prison? I'm not saying prison. She should be tried for shooting on a man. I mean, she if she a, okay, shouldn't she be tried and and if convicted, given a prison sentence? She should be, but uh, if you can't get officer special to get an arrest warrant. When your chief of police asks for a race warrant, he's supposed to get it, no matter who it's on. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get it. A judge denied it, which they won't reveal the name of that judge. Uh -huh. So we got some problems here. Okay. All right. They, they didn't go ask for a race warrant for you. Mm -hmm. This judge is assigned it. Well, have a great day. We, all right. Thank you. We got some great problems in Dallas. We have some problems in Dallas. We got people... Police officers were allowed themselves to be shot at five times before they returned fire. And then we got others when a different situation, the skin color is different, will shoot others that are unarmed, with their hands up, giving up, surrendered. What, 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 what's, you know, we know what's going on. We know what needs to be done. That should be our cries in our community. On this one, supporting our chief. We should support him when he's right and let him know when he's wrong. I believe in that. I'll criticize him when I think he's done wrong. But when he's done something right, he deserves support. And we should support him. Support him in this situation. Because how can you justify They say, well, he... He was in the car. It was a stolen car. Wait a minute. Even if it was a stolen car, even if he stole the car, if he's surrendered and given up and have no weapon on him and uh, you turn around and shoot him, you're wrong. I don't care what the situation was. If he surrendered and got has his hands up and you shoot him, that police officer should be taken to trial. That that that, that it should be. Uh, there, there should be something there uh, that will cause them to go forward and try this policeman and uh, 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 and see what's wrong with this situation. Because any time police can just shoot unarmed citizens, just can shoot them, shoot them down like dogs, 
uh, we, you know, it, it, it's bad. And, I, and I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm not going to be quiet about that. I'm not. I'm going to keep that thing up. I'm going to keep it going because we shouldn't ever allow ourselves to be targets like you're going to target practice and that that that, that you know that that the poster you're shooting at and can't shoot back, but you're going to say you are fearful of your life. If you're that fearful of your life, you don't need to be on the police department and you don't need to be free for a while until you paid your uh, uh, debt to society for shooting an unarmed man. 972-647-1893 is the number to call. 972 972- Six four seven one eight nine three is the number to call. Ah, uh, we got Doctor Edwards this on this morning. Good morning, Doc. Hey, Reverend Burnett, how you doing today? Fine. You doing okay? I'm doing fine. I just got off of work and I uh, was listening to your show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to bring up something just a little bit different. It's some in in line with the uh, department, uh, Justice Department. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you happen to see uh, this uh, judge who? Uh, was arrested uh, uh, threatening his girlfriend. I believe his name was Carlos Cortez. Do you remember him? Yes, this is the guy that wouldn't give you your day in trial and, in fact, got money from your opponent the day of your trial. Is, am yes. I not right? Is, is, did I get that right? Yeah, you, you sure did, uh, Reverend. He uh, uh, never did. Uh, he took uh, the largest campaign contribution that's that's a, a lot of in this county, which is five thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. He he didn't he didn't even he wasn't even in the court. It was a visiting judge. Mm-hmm. And, but when uh, the uh, when the defendant's attorney found out that they had been ruled against, they went and gave him. Now that's the money they gave him on top of the table. Right. I don't know how much they gave him up under the table. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, he regranted them the <laughs> trial that they lost. Mm-hmm. Motion for summary judgment that they lost, regranted it to them. Mm-hmm. After one judge did, denied it, mm-hmm. and uh, then ended up, and I, you know, I've been at this. That that would have been, you know, seven years ago. Uh, but uh, this Carlos Carlos Cortez is running for judge mm-hmm. uh, this year. Uh, oh, oh, he's up for re-election this year. He's up for re-election. He's sending out his campaign for pictures and all that kind of thing. And you said uh, his name is Carlos Cortez. Carlos Cortez. Uh-huh, we need uh-huh. to we need to make sure. Uh-huh. Can you get him on the show or call him? Or, I, I'll invite him on. I definitely will invite him on. I can't guarantee you he'll come. Uh, there are those who uh, fear coming on my show. They fear it. They fear it. They know. They know. I have a. A huge, massive audience. They, uh, but they fear it because I'm not gonna, uh, 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 you know, tap dance around certain questions and asking them. So, uh, uh, but I definitely will invite him. I'll send him an invitation, ask him to come out. Okay. Well, okay. you know, he, 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 it would be great to find out why he didn't disclose this to both uh, to uh, my attorney to see if he needs to recuse himself from the case. Mm-hmm. But if, if, you know, we, and you know as well as I do, Reverend Bunny, I take my Hippocratic oath very, very seriously. You you definitely do, because, boy, you you sure did some wonders with, with me, boy. I was, uh, you recognize just listening on the radio that I wasn't quite myself. And uh, I feel great now. I feel, you know, I feel like I'm 30 years old again. <laughs> so, well, well, we we, we got to keep you in that thirty year old lane, that Reverend Barnett. But yeah. uh, we we can't allow to have that kind of people who take an oath. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need to take it seriously. If you're not going to uphold your oath, don't take it where you serve the people and the people depend on you, mm-hmm. and uh, and and not 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 stand up for your oath. And that's one of the things I have to say that I'm proud of is that <laughs> I. Mm-hmm. I got out of med school. I wanted to be the best I could for the community, mm-hmm. white, black, red, or green. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't, I won't let anything determine. But and, and when you had my- your practice, I remember white people, a lot of white people came in to, boy, they were in your office, white people. And then you, you'd go all down off in the country. You'd be all down in East Texas, uh, going to people's houses. Man, you really took your, you, you took your old serious. Really, you did. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's why we that's why we said to uh, Judge Cortez, if you're going to take your and the same thing with the police department, you you know when they graduate from the academy, they mm-hmm. need to take these take these all seriously because they serve the public, 
and it's an honor to serve. And I, I look at it as an honor and a privilege, and not really a right. So mm-hmm. let's see if we can't uh, get Car- Co- uh, Co- uh, I mean, uh, Judge Cortez. Uh, we don't need him in our court here in Dallas. We we need to get rid of him. All righty. We thank right. you for your call, Doc. 972-647-1893. 972-647-1893. Uh, thank you for this information. You said the wheelchair guy on Dodd was John Killian. He's, they say he has passed away now. He has passed away. He used to chain himself to the doors of the Dodd bus and, uh, he'd have his chains and around his wheelchair and on the doors and the bus couldn't take off. Uh, they would get there. The police would get there. They'd be so mad and upset. But by him doing this, every one of you who uh, can get good, pull up to a bus and get a lift, they wasn't going to put lifts on that, those buses. They wasn't going to do it. They wasn't coming south of downtown Dallas. People like this, people like this got this way. They would put lifts on the buses. And we fought to make sure they brought lines south of downtown Dallas. Dart have always had a very, very, very racist, uh, 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 little man. Uh, they didn't like people. They didn't like you white folks if you didn't have a lot of money. They, it, 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 this was, it has been a tough organization from the very beginning, but we have fought. And, and because we fought, many of you are uh, enjoying putting your bicycles on the front of the bus. They weren't going to do that. All of these things, uh, and you're sitting on those rail trains, they weren't going to bring them down south. Uh, all of these these things that you're enjoying, it came out of a fight with Dart. 972-647-1893. Let's go to line one and say good morning to Sydney. All righty. Good morning, Sydney. Hey, how you doing, Reverend Barnett? Fine. How are you this morning? I know you've heard me before, and I'm glad that y'all on the subject that that really concerns me. You know, as a a voter and and a person, because when you give a person a badge and they think they have the right to kill another person, that's mm-hmm. wrong. Right. Right. You they, see what I'm saying? Well, especially if they've grown up and being raised to hate you, that's raised right. it, oh. to think that you are a thing. Uh, rather than a human being. Exactly. And you give them the badge and the law a gun and the law on their side, hey, you have a dangerous person there. Yeah, we, we're on two different... We, our forefathers was like Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King, mm-hmm. you know, and a number of others, but Mandela. Mm-hmm. You know, these are our forefathers. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we don't have the same forefathers as the white man. And I just say it straight out mm-hmm. because they don't treat us like that. Mm-hmm. Well, what, but, but, but we have got to have to carry on the legacy of yes. those who got us to this point. And uh, we are fighting. You see, this is a struggle that we can never afford to ever retire from or relax from. We have to keep this struggle up because it's a struggle for survival uh, in a land that has never really been fair to us. And it's not fair today and, and, and until we call it like it is. It's not going to get any better by pretending uh, everything is fair and uh, racism don't exist. It's here. Right. It's well. It's, it's alive and real well. And it's getting stronger every day as long as we lie down and don't stand up like men ought to stand up. That's right. And so, so far as, as children working um, and, and the, you know, having jobs and stuff, mm-hmm. well, if they lock you up and give you a felony, you're not going to get a job. They don't have to hire you. That's right. They do not have to hire you. And if it's one out of three blacks that's in that penitentiary system or in that system, think that's a big toll on America. That's right. That's right. That's a big toll, and that's a big toll on our community, even worse. And, it's smart people down there. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are down there that's mm-hmm. smart. But mm-hmm. it's a fact that they've been locked up. The right. reason they can't handle these top jobs. Yeah. They won't right. let them have them. All righty. We thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh-huh. Thank you for your call and comment. 972-647-1892 is the number to call me. 972-647-1893. We're up against a short break, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back on the Church Information Open Forum. We're in our final segment, and you can get us at 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893. If you have questions, comments, or whatever you'd like to talk about, 
This is your voice. We are the voice of the people. 972-647-1893. And we're going to line four and say good morning to uh, the head, the CEO of Justice Seekers of Texas. Good morning, Reverend Wright. Good morning, Pastor Boyd. Happy New Year's to you. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. yeah good, good. You got a great show going on. I'm going to try to hit you in 60 seconds. First mm-hmm. of all, Pastor, 2014 needs to be an accountability year. Right. right. Mm-hmm. You know, we were discussing voting. It, it, not only do we vote and put them in office, but we hold them accountable. Hold I, them accountable. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to hold them accountable. And, you know, I heard you make mention about the Mike Wallace thing and some other interesting thing uh, going against David Cooper. There were people who looked like us that tricked us into voting for this mayor, and it was because of money and things. That because he had plenty of money to pass around to them. That's but, it. So mm-hmm. One of the people that supported him was somebody that was against. One of the things that he took place against those loan places. Right. And then you know he was the number one, one of the guys that was supporting it. Payday that's loan right. king. That's yeah. right. And so that needs to be, that needs to be some accountability. We got to quit selling ourselves out as a people. Uh, you, 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 the last caller made mention about jobs. Well, the black church takes in millions of dollars to the bank on Monday morning. Why we can't come together and open our own business and put our people to work? I'm in a relationship with the Korean community right now, and we're mm-hmm. trying to find a warehouse to put formerly incarcerated men to work to give them a second chance. Shame on anybody else, but the Korean community have reached out to us and said, we why, want to but Why do we have to have the Korean community? And as you have just said, we take in millions of dollars every week, take millions to the banks every Monday morning, and... Uh, it, that slave mentality, that sure it is. that that you know, divide and conquer mentality, is permeated through until this date in 2014. Is that, did they do something to us that we can't shake? What what? Why we can't shake this thing off? Uh, you know, leadership attitude reflect leadership, Pastor. It's our leaders with this about me mentality, and you know. Uh, I, and that's a shame that other communities were willing to reach out and say, man, y'all should be in much greater shape than y'all. And we willing to help you. I, said, I told him, I said, man, we got to help these young black men get jobs again. Prison ministry that I've been sitting in past should be mm-hmm. taught out here and not in that. Any cast in prison. We right. need to be taught to give out here in this world. Mm-hmm. And because, and if we need to start with us as black pastors, it needs to start with us. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah, spend a lot yeah. of money for pastors. You know, we spend millions of dollars, oh. and you can't make me believe if I'm uh, if, 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 if my if I'm if I'm spending millions of dollars at Walmart or the Target, you can't hire my son because he made a mistake. Well, I don't need to spend my money there. No, oh, well, see, you see, uh, all of this stuff we could reverse if our minds was right, but our minds have not been renewed. Something is wrong with us. And you just can't get us to see it. But we got some, a few people that's making a lot of money. They don't want to see this thing change. And these people in high positions, uh, big churches, and they, they don't want it to change. They want it to stay just the way it is because if it changed, that would make them accountable to do more, and they don't want to do any more. Absolutely. Now, on the David Conklin mm. situation, I heard that the victim – said that that young man that was shot was a part of that robbery. Well, I don't, I don't even care if he was a part of a, a, or something. If he surrendered, got his hands up, and no weapon, no threat to that police officer, that police officer uh, shouldn't have shot him. Well, she shouldn't have, but mm-hmm. trust me, uh, I heard you say we need to support the chief on this. Sometimes this be a dog and pony show, Pastor. This might be one of those dogs. Well, uh, believe me, that police association is after him now. Oh, the, the, he, he's up. He turned to apple cart over. He may not have been trying to, but he did. And for those guys to wait and, 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 and gals, they're out there in Oakland for when this white lawyer was shot at them five times before they returned fire. They held up to make sure they were doing right. They held up. They respected him. And for you to shoot. An uh, honor, uh, man, when you hold up on the other end, uh-uh, something's wrong, something is desperately That's wrong. History is that we've been going through that since back in the early 2000s. When well, I say this is 2014. No, we've been going through it a lot longer than that. Uh, you know, this is 2014. We need to put a stop to this mess. 
I want to let y'all also know we're investigating. I didn't want to put it out here, but I can tell you. Oh, I know you. I know what you're doing. See, see, see. I know what you're doing. I ain't worried about that. But I'm just trying to get more support for those people like you who will stand up for things that are right. We're we'll gonna be addressing all of that next year, but we also <coughs> in the case that we got a call from a dark employee mm-hmm. that threatened his suicide. And, uh, and 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 when he the threat was made to another employee, now this dark driver, uh, all of his majority of his passengers are in the black community, mm-hmm. and when that threat was turned into the dark, that that driver still driving the bus with his white man. Is that right? Yes, sir. We're looking into that case right now. Okay. Uh, uh, on Monday, we're looking at it because if he's threatening to commit suicide mm-hmm. with several other people on that bus. Why should they die behind something that he's threatening to do? And when we contacted Dart, Dart and them still have allowed, I mean, we have a contact with the person turned the text message in to Well, Dart. see, we're going to have to go back to our old tactics. Uh, uh, we didn't send no emails. We didn't send any letters. We just go down there, go in his office, and, uh, you know, and let her know that they hit her, Dart, you, you're going to talk to us, and, uh, be enough of us police coming to arrest us, but as soon as we get out of jail, we're coming right back down. Now he he gonna have to talk to us. We're gonna have to go back to our old tactics of doing things because uh being nice to these people, you get nowhere. Uh, nowhere. The heck with this technology. We going back to the streets. All righty. All right, but I'm gonna keep you, in, I'm gonna keep you informed. Give, on give me a call this morning. Give me a call. We we'll get off there. Oh. All right. Yeah, come on right now. All right, nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Let's go to Miss Hawkins on line three. All righty, Miss. Good morning, Miss Hawkins. Hey, good morning to you, Reverend Barnett. I fine. How are you? you? Excuse me, I have a little cold this morning. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna start coughing. I'm gonna let this phone hang on up. But I've been listening to your uh, show mm-hmm. every Saturday, and I, I definitely uh, listen to Reverend Wright. Mm-hmm. He's right on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm, I've been listening to you talking about this criminal. You know, they making movies. That black is the new orange, and yeah. it literally is like back in the day when the signs were out, white only, right. you know, mm-hmm. colored only, black only. Because when you see a person that made a mistake, and, and they're the biggest criminals, like you said, they took out, they took out nations, they mm-hmm. took out cities. Mm-hmm. Some of them cultures and Asian cultures have still been affected with the residue of those bombs. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So they the criminals. As a matter of fact, they 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 they're the real criminals because right now they now they pension. Most of y'all's pension, mm-hmm. but they still dibbling and dabbling in, uh, in, and I, I guess in, uh, in, in criminals. But, but like you said, they labeled it to us to where uh, we, we'll continue to be that gatekeeper for them. They don't have to do it too much. Mm-hmm. So they, you are, they're not already put in your mind. They're not gonna hire you. Mm-hmm. You know, they're but, not gonna bring you on a job. Why mm-hmm. not? Why well, not? This is hey, where uh, when they came, when they came, when they came off the airplanes, them jets asking for millions after they already took. Slap the people in the face, send them home with their pink slip. The people didn't know what they were going to do with their family. Mm-hmm. They, this is all over the world. They, but, but, but America said this now. They're coming in on the jets now. We can't let them do it. So they came back in with little clown cars, little bitty ones. Four or five of them in one big. When they got out, they said, you're happy now. Well, they got the check. Well, they went back stealing some more. But they mm-hmm. did it the way we wanted to see them doing it. So like I say, they're the biggest criminals you ever want to see. They're doing more stealing on paper than we'd ever be able to do. Because like I said, that's why they don't want you in there to right. know what they're doing. But let me say this. I committed a crime when I was 18. Mm-hmm. I'm 34 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, and I came out of there with a GD. You know, mm-hmm. just things that teenagers do. I don't condone it. It was wrong. You know, but I can't keep begging people to forgive me. You know, and, and it's for them telling me to go get another uh, a, a business. You, it's hard to go get the business loan when they when they know you got a felony and they even want to raise your show and show it. Mm-hmm. So it was difficult for me to find a business loan, and then for me to even do a nonprofit, for me to find people on my board that would take me serious when we can get busy too, help other people like myself or other or do other ventures in the community. But let me say this: I went and got a GED, associate's, bachelor's, and master's. Worked on a doctorate a little bit. It's no excuses. But it'll tell me, you know, on the job, and this record is 15 years old. Mm-hmm. Well, no well see, you see, this know? happened when you, you were a child. I was a, I was a little girl. But there's no I forgiveness. I was in a small community. I had young parents. And I'm not giving them no excuses because I had a right mind. You understand what I'm <laughs> right, saying? But right. I did. I, wa- I wanted to be a part of that. Co- I, wanted to, I wanted to jump in. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a part of what the other people were doing. Not knowing that this is something they felt like they had to do. This was survival. Okay, right. I jumped on in. I wanted to do a get in trouble. Immediately they sent me to prison. They said they didn't like my family. So why do you immediately think, they sent me. Why do and you we think? went and I, I knew them. I said, wait a minute. This ain't what I'm supposed to be doing here. Mm-hmm. I can do better than this. Matter of fact, I can help. 
So I said, okay, God, you know what? You can trust me. Yeah. You can trust me now to do what I need to do. I didn't know that he meant that, you know what? The world wasn't going to forgive you even though I am. Even yeah. though I am. It's well, been a why do, why do we as a people are so unforgiving toward our own? You know what? I, I, I don't know what this mentality is, but we can go back and say it's slave mentality and all that. But we have overcome enough as a people to know right from wrong. Yeah. We don't have to hold that as an excuse over, over somebody's head. No, but why are we so unforgiving? We will forgive other people. And then, you know what? When they close their doors, they're doing everything under the sun. You went and hate you and and that and, and I put a camera right directly in their home. Yeah. Because they're doing everything mm -hmm. under the sun. So the thing is, is, is uh, and, and right out here. Okay. They latching hands with people behind closed doors that we ain't, we would never want to see them latching hands. All right. Well, we thank you for your call. I got to get my job line in, but I thank you thank for you. calling. All right. Thank you so much for it, All right. Thank you. Uh, let's go to our job line on line one and say good morning to Mr. Greg Barber. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Reverend Barnett. Fine. How are you this morning? Doing fine, man. Is it doing good fine. New Year? Yep. No. All I'm good when you see the beginning of it. <laughs> okay. The rest, right. the, the rest is up to you. God gave you the health and the strength and set you in your right mind. The rest mm -hmm. is up to you. Yeah. All right. Are there any jobs out there this year? There are awesome jobs out here this morning on our SAT job line. <clears throat> the Solutions and Actions Today job line brought to you every Saturday morning at Church Information and Open Farm here on Kennelly and 89.3, the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. This morning, Coca-Cola is looking for a forklift operator. They're asking you to apply online at www.careers.peopleclick.com backslash careers. Once again, that web address is www.careers.peopleclick.com backslash careers with an S. 84 Lumber is looking for general labor and warehouse and lumber yard personnel. They're asking you to apply online at www. Dot eighty four the number eighty four lumber l -A l u m b e r dot silk road dot com once again that web address is www dot eighty four lumber l u m b e r dot silk road dot com quality edge is looking for a warehouse and production representatives They're asking you to apply online at www dot quality edge q u a l i t y e d g e dot com backslash H O M E. Once again, that's quality aid is looking for warehouse product and production personnel. Asking your palm line at www.qualityedge.com backslash home. UT Southwestern Medical Center is looking for customer service representatives. Asking you to apply online at www.jobapplication number two dot org. Once again, that's UT Southwestern Medical Center is looking for customer service representatives asking you to apply online at www.jobapplication, the number two, .swmed.org. Cisco Corporation is looking for warehouse selectors asking you to apply online at www.ch.tbe.tale.net. Once again, that web address is www.ch. Dot T B E dot T A L E O dot net. If you are a child loving patient and energetic individual and would like to work in a daycare setting, the number for inquiry is nine seven two two nine zero four nine nine five. Once again, if you are a child loving patient and energetic individual and would like to work in a daycare setting, the number for inquiry is nine seven two two nine zero four nine nine five. If you are a person affected by addiction and need assistance with your recovery efforts or an ex is trying to make the transition back into mainstream society and need assistance with job search, the number for inquiry is 214-634-2722. Once again, if you are a person affected by addiction and need assistance with your recovery efforts or an ex is trying to make the transition back into mainstream society and need assistance with job search, the number for inquiry is 214-634-2722. Is a good day if you're looking for a job to find one. Let me repeat that. Today is a good day if you're looking for a job to find one. The late, great Ross Safari and Bob Marley once said, get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. And with that, we bring our SAT job line to a close. All righty. Great job, as always, Greg. Great job, as always. You put a lot of work into it. And uh, we thank you. Thank you for all that you've done over the years. Mr. Greg Barber and our solution and action today. 
uh, job line. We're going to have to get out of there. We're about to get out of there and got the rum. I'd like to say a compliment my granddaughter, Tatiana Barnett. She's my one of my son's daughter, and uh, she won the Spelling D competition out there in, Ma- in Mansfield <laughs> uh, Independent School District there, and she's uh, up there. Got they, she's going to another competition, and she wins there. This competition leads to the National Spelling Bee, and uh, she is a spelling champion. And uh, sometimes I have to call on her to help her grandfather spell <laughs> words. <laughs> and uh, uh, Tootie, we thank you, darling, and uh, we're so uh, proud of you. And uh, you keep up the good work. Tatiana. All right. Got to get out and run. I'm the senior pastor of Heavenly Joy Church. We're located at Bruton and Masters here in the city of Dallas. And uh, we say a service begin at 11 o'clock on uh, Sunday mornings. And uh, you're welcome. And Sunday school is at 9.30 p.m. And then you're welcome to come to our great Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. Everybody is welcome to come and enjoy the Lord with us. So may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.